Hey everybody, welcome to another Collecting the King show. This is a special edition where I'm going to have a special guest, Steve Orlando. Uh, you might remember Steve from when we were going through all of Al DeVorn's stuff. He was um, uh, a part of all that. And Steve is kind of the local expert on uh, Elvis on tour and concerts and a little bit of everything. Actually, he's a collector himself and he's just diving into more and more into the collecting stuff. Um, but uh, what's important is that he has a lot of knowledge about Elvis on tour. So I thought it would be fun if we did a show where uh, he helped me analyze some of the photos that are used on Elvis's albums. Like, for example, here is, uh, you know, the Fool album. And uh, obviously the photo on here is from uh, Aloha from Hawaii. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of go through some of Elvis's LPs and we're going to talk about, you know, when were those photos taken? What concert were they from? Maybe some of the history of some of those pictures on the albums. And uh, it'll give us all an idea of what they were thinking when they were putting together some of these pictures that they used for these albums. Because as you know, a lot of them were rushed some of these albums had pictures on them that had nothing to do with the album itself, like Raised on Rock, or even this one here, which is basically just a compilation album of studio recordings. They use a live photo to promote the LP, because back then there weren't any photographers. Nobody was taking any pictures except for Ed Bonja, who would actually take pictures during the course of a concert. And then they would pick them out. The colonel would look at them and go, okay, well, we'll use this one, we'll use that one, which would explain why there were so many live concert photos on uh, Elvis's releases, like Raised on Rock or, uh, or Promised Land. So we're going to get into all that. We're going to talk about that uh, on this show, and uh, let's get to that right now. Here is uh, the conversation that we recorded with Steve Orlando and myself, so here it is. I'm here with uh, my special guest, Steve Orlando, and uh, some of you might remember Steve from previous shows. You know, I consider him kind of like the concert expert because, you know, uh, he's younger than me. Uh, he hasn't been to the concerts. You haven't been to any concerts, right? Just tribute artists. I've seen Elvis three times and Steve hasn't. But what's, what's insane is even though I'm older and I've been an Elvis fan longer than him, he knows a hell of a lot more than I do about, about concerts and all that kind of stuff. And you might, you might remember in a few of the other, uh, we did a couple shows where we went through Al DeVorn's stuff. That was pretty interesting. Oh, great. And of course, you learned stuff too, right? I mean, about, about the tours and the concerts. The mechanisms and how to keep track of all the sales and right. the different and items Al, that were available. And Al did, in, in an indirect way, uh, the stuff that we saw, Al was keeping track of the concerts as well as what was sold there. So we got information uh, two ways. I got information about souvenirs and some uh, of, of the origins of the souvenirs, and you got some information about the concerts through the souvenir sales, exactly. right? Exactly. Okay. Well, it was a very valuable and uh, uh, experience that I'll never forget, and I have to thank you for that, Robert. Well, you're welcome. So what we're going to do uh, here, folks, is we're going to start off by, um, as I said, Steve is kind of, as far as I'm concerned, the local expert on concerts and stuff like that. And this is the Collecting the King show. So I try to ma make things match up in a way where we can talk about hist historical stuff and factual stuff uh, and mix it in with collecting. And that's what we're going to do for the first part of the first segment here. We got into a conversation about album covers. And here's, here's some facts that maybe some of you know and some of you don't know. Those of you who know Ed Bonja, probably already know that uh, Ed took a lot of pictures of Elvis. And based on what he had told me personally, and Al DeVorn had told me, and several others, Ed Bonja was not like a professional photographer. He was just kind of invited, or maybe ordered by the Colonel, <laughs> to take pictures. Uh, I don't know if it was to save money from a, a professional photographer or what, knowing the Colonel, it probably was. But um, he ended up taking a lot of pictures of Elvis. And instead of doing regular photo shoots, which they probably should have done for different Elvis album covers, and we'll, we'll touch on that in a minute, um, they used, you know, whatever live shots that he, he shot from whatever concerts uh, he, he would attend. So um, I'm not sure if that's true, but I, I, someone told me that he would actually go and set up because he was a part of the crew, and then he would have his camera, and when Elvis performed, he would take pictures. All right, this, of course, is... Raised on Rock. 
But you are now going to tell us what concert is well, that shot from? I can narrow it down for you because this picture was taken at the Las Vegas Hilton uh, during the January 26 to February 23, 1973 run. And the problem with Vegas concert shots is they're quite rare. We, we see plenty of pictures of Elvis in concert on tour because, hey, there's anywhere between eight and 20,000 people with their cameras ready to go. But the more intimate setting of the uh, Hilton main showroom with 2,200 people, and maybe there was some sort of a rule about flash photography or any photography because it's pretty rare to see shots from Vegas. But that, I believe, was taken sometime in February 73. Okay, so this is a Vegas shot or it not? Is. It is. It is. Okay, Absolutely. so this is from Vegas. Okay, mm -hmm. how about... Uh, Promise Land. Yeah, that shot was taken at the Los Angeles Forum, May 11th, 1974, the afternoon show. <laughs> the afternoon show. Where? Uh, what was the rare song at that concert that he sang? Hurt? N no. No. Because that was before Hurt oh, was the, even recorded. The rare, by the rare song? It's well, not no, no, no. At the concert in LA, May 11th, 74. Got he, me. One time only, he sang, You Can Have Her. I Don't Want Her. She Don't Love Me Anyway. What'd I tell you? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know that. I just learned that now. All right, here we go. How about uh, Elvis today? Uh, th that's, I think, from the June of 73 tour. Um, I want to say that that shot was taken in Atlanta, maybe June 30th, 73, but I could be off by a day or two. It could have been Nashville, but in that late June, early July of 73, that's when that photo was taken. Okay. And, you know, we got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of viewers, of course, who put co tons of comments in. Correct so. me. Be more specific, folks. More specific than I was on that Elvis Today shot. All right. This one's kind of controversial because I, uh, I remember when this album first came out, Elvis in Concert, uh, someone had said, oh, well, that's from the last couple shows or whatever, that, that, that picture. Yeah, exactly. So uh, where, is, um, where is this shot from? That's, it's from the June of 75 tour. Um, could it have been Jackson on June 8th, 75? Could have been. Um, he also wore that suit in Huntsville. He wore that suit, I believe, ooh, I might be wrong on this. He might have wore it in Mobile. But uh, I'd, I'm going to say Jackson, Mississippi, June eighth, seventy-five. Okay, and of course, seventy-two. 72. Am I right? That sure is seventy-two. Yeah, because it's the famous blue suit. Remember the one that, the one that he wore on in the afternoon matinee show that I saw. There's still a debate about that, folks. No, I, I, I don't think there's a debate anymore. <laughs> well, good. So, so it's it's finally agreed. He Robert wore the shirt and up, pants but... and the jacket for the matinee show in seventy-two. Yeah. Okay. Now that shot. I think he just agrees with me just so that he's, you know, <laughs> just yeah. so we don't get in any arguments. Now, but now this, I was there. Now, since um, this particular microphone, and, well, so this is definitely not the April 72 tour. This is most likely June. And he wore this suit uh, during that June tour in um, Milwaukee. He wore it in Chicago. And that, those are the only two shows that I can recall that he wore the powder blue. And he wore it in, in Milwaukee, right? He wore it in okay. Milwaukee and he wore it in Chicago. So Chicago, yeah. Milwaukee. I know because I knew I have friends in Milwaukee who told me that when he was there, he had the blue suit. Mm -hmm. And that was not too far long after. Uh, you know, that's kind of cool because um, Elvis on tour, uh, the movie when it was being shot, I, I believe it was shot. Uh, was it prior to Chicago or just after? Yes. No, no, before. It was just before Chicago. Yeah, the, the filming was, uh, you know, the tour was April 5th starting in Buffalo, finishing in Albuquerque on April 19th. Well, and that's, that's so cool because, yeah. you know, I keep thinking, wow, wouldn't that have been nice if he, they were filming that in Chicago when I was there? This, of course, is a no-brainer, all right? I don't even need Steve to tell me what, <laughs> where this is from. Uh, Aloha from Hawaii, am I right? Right? Okay. The, the main show, not the rehearsal not, show. Oh, well, see, yeah. what did I tell you? He knows the, he knows the difference between the shows. Mm -hmm. Well, at least I got Aloha from Hawaii right, mm -hmm. am I right? Absolutely. Okay. All right, and this is a great cover too. You know, uh, uh, time and time again, how many how many fans and collectors have said this should have been the cover of Aloha mm -hmm. from Hawaii, and I think they could have done it. Somebody said they couldn't have done it because oh well, they were rushed for time, which is what RCA always did. We talked about a hundred times. Mm -hmm. They rush things out because they got to get it out there. But the truth of the matter is, they they could have put this on there. Because the the thing would the the concert was already done, it was already recorded. Mm -hmm. They were getting ready to press it. 
they could have grabbed this picture, which I would imagine is Ed Banja. It's an Ed Banja shot, I would imagine. Maybe I'm wrong, but they could have used this. Right. Or it, it could have worked out, they, you know. Or at the very least, if the time constraint was a legitimate excuse, Elvis did three concerts in the same venue, Honolulu, November 17th and 18th, 72, and there's a ton of great shots from those yeah. three shows so they could, that have, could have been used. Yeah, they could have used something better. But anyway, they, they ended up with something else. These two um, on the back here, this is um, Madison Square Garden. I think someone had mentioned this in a comment when I talked about Madison Square Garden. This is not Madison Square Garden, right? Of course not, no. Okay, so what show is... Well, that's uh, Jacksonville, Florida, April 16th, 72, the afternoon show. The reason why it's so easily identifiable is this is the only time Elvis wore this suit on tour outside of Las Vegas. Um, the white, I guess they call it the white pyramid suit, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, I have no idea why. <laughs> yeah, and I always thought it was like a, uh, kind of like, um, you know, the, the burst, uh, like uh, fireworks. Right. You know is that, I mean? or is this a butter? Is this a butterfly? Remember those these little squares? Yeah. Did it happen to be that these were the shape of the butterfly, or is that a different suit? I might be mixing up my suits, but this is the only time that he wore that suit on tour. If you recall from uh, both uh, Elvis on tour and this is Elvis, the scene of Elvis in the back of the limousine talking about the uh, the rocket launch and all this other right, right. Uh, you know, banter. Um, this was the show um, that that's Elvis drove in and out of, in the limo. Oh, okay. There is footage of Elvis uh, having All right, so fun with the guys. So you can go and check that out on the video if you mm -hmm. want to find out. But here's a good example. There is that uh, suit. That's Aloha. And what, mm -hmm. what suit is that now? Or what, 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 uh, what it, concert? There's, there's different names. Uh, some people call it the white pinwheel. I call it the red lion suit. But I, I guess okay. it's the red lion belt with... The, uh, oh, because of the scarf and all that? Well, the, the, the red lion, it's a lion on the belt buckle, yeah. and that's the suit that that belt was uh, paired with. Okay, uh, but this was earlier show. This Is is this 72 as well? That's April 72. Oh, yeah. April yeah. of 72. Mm -hmm. Th this, uh, Elvis on tour? Sure, yes. This is from, a shot is from Elvis on tour. I'm not sure exactly what city. I mean, he wore that suit in Macon, Georgia. He wore it in San Antonio. He wore it in Detroit. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that this is probably a Macon, Georgia, April 15th, 72 wow. shot. So coincidentally, on Madison Square Garden, they used a shot from April 16th. On Aloha from Hawaii, I believe this shot is from April 15th. Well, you know, these shots, too, could have been actually shots. Uh, I think Ed Bonja did do this one, but, I mean, this could have been left over from the Elvis on tour. I mean, you know, they had cameras all over the place, so... You know, some of these shots could have come from from them as well. But without a doubt, folks, this should have been the cover of Aloha from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I, I, agree. I personally think they had enough time to do it. Mm. Okay, so getting to this, this is uh, interesting. Speaking of Elvis on tour, uh, those of you who are uh, all excited about this, I, I, I know all the Elvis fans are, are going nuts about it. Get, this is actually a very good package that uh, they put out. And this is domestic. It's not Follow That Dream. This is a regular... Sony BMG release. What a cover. I mean, yeah, that is one cool hell song. of a cover. Um, and now this, of course, is the Powder Blue. So what uh, concert are we here? Which, uh, I know it's obviously from you on tour, right? It is. So and which, it, and which, it's appropriately uh, the April 72 tour. Um, uh, he wore this suit in Hampton Roads, the evening show on April 9th. He wore it in Indianapolis. He wore it in... Um, uh, I think one of the two shows in Macon, he wore that as well. Uh, so he only wore it three times that tour. So it's one of those three dates. To me, uh, looking at his face, it doesn't look like this is from Hampton Roads. I would say it's either Indianapolis or Macon, Georgia. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now this, this of course, um, I was talking to Johnny B about this, and he thought that he thought that this was not the picture from the Burning Love Forty Five. Uh, and if I if I can find a picture, I'll post it, and you can take a look for yourself. But I think that's the picture from the forty five. It looks similar. Very it similar. looks similar. But Johnny mm -hmm. B says, I think it was Johnny B. Yeah, I think it was. He says, well, Elvis's head has turned just a little bit. So, and, and I'm thinking, nah, I don't think so. I think that's the that's the picture sleeve. And unfortunately, folks, I don't have a copy of the Burning Love picture sleeve, or I'd show it to you. We could actually hold it side by side, but. Um, what, what you, what's your opinion? You know, it's either the same photo or someone was in rapid fire succession and it was a split second. A split different. second, though. And, mm -hmm. you know, only Johnny B could see a split second. I doubt it. Kudos. Uh, but Johnny anyway, um, 
Okay, so this is from what what concert now? Well, so that's certainly April of 72. He wore that suit for the afternoon show in Hampton Roads, April 9th. He wore it in um, Richmond. He wore it Richmond? in Richmond, okay. uh, which was on April 10th. And he also wore it in Little Rock, Arkansas on April 17th. Um, of the three shows, I'm not sure which date that's from, but it's definitely from one of those three. Okay. But again, folks, what a fantastic album. Do you, do you agree this is... You know, they should have designed... Whoever did this design should have did the designs in the 70s for Elvis's other album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Definitely. Yeah, well, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure, but I, I think I told you before, folks, that Roger and Ernst Jorgensen, I, I saw them every year in Memphis when we were down there for like, I don't know how many years. And I remember Roger telling me that... Every time uh, they put out an album or a CD for Follow That Dream, they wanted to use a new picture, mm -hmm. which is why I wasn't too thrilled about a couple of the Follow That Dream releases, because like How Great Thou Art was How Great Thou Art. You know, uh, mm -hmm. his hand in mine was his hand in mine. I even remember saying, saying to Roger, I says, Roger, that looks like the same album. I thought you said that you were going to be creative, you know, and he just went, you know, shrugged it off. Uh, oh, well, I love that album. But anyway, um, this, this here is a great example of them, you know, really thinking it out and coming up with a great shot. And I think, I would, I would say this is probably Roger, Roger's idea. Because, I mean, he, he, I remember him telling me he was in charge of the vinyl. Uh, although Ernst was in charge of the Sony BMG releases. So, eh, one or two of them. But whoever came up with it out of the two of them, you know, I think it's one of the best covers uh, I have seen personally on a... Um, a legitimate, uh, you know, domestic BMG, uh, 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 Sony BMG release or legacy release. Actually, this is RCA legacy, isn't it? That's why I keep saying Sony BMG. Well, Sony's on there. But anyway, uh, RCA legacy. And of course, uh, for those of you who may or may not know, I don't know when this video is going to post, but uh, coming up on Record Store Day, uh, there's going to be another double album, which is also put out by... Um, uh, Sony BMG or RCA, RCA Legacy, Legacy called Burning Love, and it's going to be the rehearsals for the show. Cool. Kind of the best of the rehearsals. The thing about this album that's so cool is that they notice how they did this. They took they took um, the first seven songs from that show, matched it up to the next songs that, that on the agenda mm -hmm. for the for the next show which is Richmond starting off with Hampton Richmond and and then um went to Greensboro and wrapped up the show so you it's almost like you're listening to all three shows in mm -hmm. as one show which is really really cool they did something similar uh, on the Elvis Aaron Presley box set from 1980 where where they, they kind of composed they composed two concerts right uh, Dallas 75 together. and Shreveport 75 right right so, and then of course yeah. these last ones are just you know random uh, Extra extra songs from uh, uh, well Hampton Roads and then also from the uh, from San Antonio Texas. Mm -hmm. Anyway, great great album. So that brings me to the final one that that Johnny B wanted me to uh, make sure I asked you about, and that would be um, this album here. And of course, if you haven't got it, you should get it. It's awesome. This is. Um, from Elvis Presley Boulevard. And it's very interesting. It's a very unusual FTD, I think, because first of all, it's colored vinyl, for one. It's numbered, it has the blue sticker. And I've also heard that uh, some copies don't have the blue sticker. Interesting. People were getting copies from Graceland, ordering them from Graceland and not getting the sticker, which was strange because mm -hmm. there's supposed to be only, let's see, 3,500 copies of this made. Limited edition. Limited edition, you know. So uh, not sure what the, the gimmick was here, but I know this is only the second time, I believe the second time, that an FTD is colored vinyl. Because Moody Blue, I think, is clear vinyl. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. But I know that uh, Moody Blue is colored vinyl. I think it's numbered and everything, too. Hard, almost impossible to find out. So I think they wanted to do the same thing with this release. Anyway, getting back to Johnny B, uh, he wants to know what show that that is from. And you told me to bring up this, so I'm going to have you hold this. All right. That's the original, and we can put them side by side. There you go. So there's the original, and then this is the new one. Yeah. I did this on the last show where I put an original. It happened at the World's Fair with the new one, just for fun. So anyway, here's uh, here's what they look like. The original from Elvis Presley mm -hmm. Boulevard, and here's the FTD. Yeah. So what did what did what is your uh, thoughts on the judging by the hair? I'm 
90% certain that that's uh, from Detroit, the second show of the tour, April 6th, 72. Um, and he wore that same suit in San Antonio, and we have the footage of Elvis on tour from San Antonio. That's not from San Antonio. So I, I think it's from Detroit, April 6th. I think he also wore that suit in Macon um, on April 15th, as well as um, that would have been Roanoke on April 11th. But I'm going to go out on a limb, say Detroit. Detroit, 72. Yeah, April 6th. Okay. So what is that then? Is that also 72? No, no, because uh, when this originally came out in... Because um, he's got a little bit of a ponce on it, ponch on his stomach there. You well, know? there's a story behind that. Um, so long story short, uh, this, these tracks were recorded February 76 in the Jungle Room at the house. And um, this album, I believe, came out in April 76 because Hurt was coming up the charts uh, and made it to the its highest ranking, uh, number 28, on February 20, I'm sorry, May 28, mm -hmm. 76, is when Hurt got as high as it was going to get I remember that. Hot 100, or the top 40, depending on what uh, you keep track of. No, but long story short, this uh, photo was taken, and it was, I think, appropriate for the period. It was taken in June of 75 for a 1976 release. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of discussion, and actually I've seen uh, arguments online about this. Well, this was taken... Uh, in Memphis on June tenth, seventy five. No, this was taken in Mobile, Alabama, on June second, seventy five. And I think after all the dust settled, I think the consensus is this photo was from Mobile, Alabama, on June second. And the fun little uh, tidbit on this is a little early example of Photoshop. In the real undoctored photo, there was a little bit of a bulge above the belt. Oh no, okay. and it's magically just disappeared <laughs> by the time it made it to the album cover. Yeah, well, well they, they, Elvis was uh, obviously putting on the weight around that time, for sure. Right. I know I saw him in 76, and when he walked on stage, I went, holy cow. <laughs> well, good thing you didn't see him a month or two before that, because he was much bigger before. Was he really? Oh, in August and September of 76, he was probably at his he, worst. Because I remember when he came out on stage, he said, he made a, a joke about how he looked and how he felt, you know, and, I, and I'm sure there's a concert, maybe a studio thing of, of it out there somewhere where, uh, where you actually hear him say what I thought I heard him say, you know, because we've had that debate too. I, uh, I remember well, him. Those shows are on soundboard. They are? Okay. Yeah. So you're saying that the seven, that was another thing Johnny B wanted to know, mm -hmm. was 76, uh, was the 76 shows and then the 77 Chicago shows on soundboard. Do you uh, know? The October 14th and 15th are on soundboard. Uh, the, Bootleg, though. Yes. Yep. The, but not Follow That Dream. Correct. Not yet. Right. right. Okay. Well, they it, probably it, it originally wanna... came out, the 14th show on the, October 14th came out on the name Chicago Beat. Right. Um, then there was the October 15th show, Bringing Down the House. Those were the early I think I, rem I remember releases. those. Yeah, I yeah. remember that. Uh, they were terrible shows. I mean, I, I, I love Elvis, and I, I, but I hate to say it. it. They were not very good. I mean, uh, Elvis was, I don't know what happened. I, 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 you know, I keep getting confused whether it was 76 or 77, but I, I, I distinctively remember him not coming out on the stage for almost like it felt like forever, like a half hour. You know, because uh, the Sweet Inspiration sang and all these other people came out and uh, they, they played things. Uh, the, uh, Jackie Kahane came out and did some comedy. The same and, jokes um, he probably did and, every time. At the time, yeah. of course, I didn't know Al DeVorn, but Al DeVorn was there. And I remember him coming out and saying, Elvis will be here shortly and blah, 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 you know, and this and that. And then finally Elvis came out and he did uh, the shortest show I've ever, I've ever seen or heard of. I could have sworn it was no more than, God, 45 minutes at the most. You know, it, 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 he just cut the, the, the song short and everything. You're shaking your head. Like, yeah, you're wrong. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, no, I can't uh, Elvis, be wrong because... No, you were, because uh, Elvis was on stage uh, October 14th and 15th, uh, 76, at the stadium for between 64 and 66 minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the only reason I know that is because I looked it up after he told me that Elvis only gave a 45-minute show. Okay, but 56 <laughs> minutes is short, though. No, 65. About 65. You're saying he was on he was, 65 He was on minutes? just over an hour. You should have been there. Yeah. Well, well, you would I, never have said 65 minutes. It might have felt... Well, remember, yeah, might have I felt saw, like that. But remember, I saw him in 72. 
I saw the full and Elvis on tour concert. And that was a long concert with oh, at least twenty five great songs. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was it was, it was awesome. So yeah. anything that was less than that was a short show. So okay, mm -hmm. fine, I I stand corrected. He, he got, Maybe he, it wasn't forty five, yeah. but it was absolutely shorter no. than than the usual shows from seventy one, seventy two, and et cetera. The shortest show uh, in that era happened in St. Louis, March twenty second, seventy six. That was the last show of that short six-day tour, and um, Elvis wasn't very appreciative of um, the crowd. Um, and in fact, uh, a lady ran on stage while he was singing You Gave Me a Mountain and basically tackled Elvis, and the microphone hit oh. Elvis in the mouth. Oh. And after he finished the song, he's like, man, you guys are crazy. <laughs> but he, uh, he basically told Charlie, hey, let's take it on home a little earlier than usual. And oh. uh, I th heard that he made it known. I don't ever want to go back to St. Louis. Wow. And, and that okay. was his last St. Louis concert. All right, so getting back to this, then this this shot, doesn't this shot match that? It's definitely from the same show. Okay. Um, so Because he, he's wearing the same suit there. Yeah, yeah, the Indian feather or the chief suit, as it also has become known. Yeah. Um, yes, that's, that's Mobile, Alabama, um, June 2nd, 75. Um, and here, I don't believe... There's been any Photoshop, so you do see a little bit of a bulge over <laughs> the uh, belt uh, near Elvis's left arm. Yeah. There have been a, f a, a few albums where the back cover photo should have been the front cover. I'm thinking that wow. should have been the front cover because of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it is kind of the same album, even same. though they're not, you know, necessarily from a concert because this was recorded at in the jungle room mm -hmm. but um if you're going to be consistent or at least comparable to the u.s releases you'd want to get something close to it and this is a, you know just a variation of that shot if i'm correct so this should have been on the front that should have been on the back mm -hmm. elvis looks pissed here you know what it looks like it looks like he sees that woman that tackled him mm -hmm. in the audience and he's looking at her warning her like no no don't you come up here don't you come up here. Don't be cruel. Don't be cruel. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's kind of what he looks like, doesn't he? he, look, he you know, you tell me in the comments. This is, he looks pissed off, right? I don't know. I, I just don't. And this, the, the, this new hairstyle, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm sure it's just his hair kind of fell forward or whatever. But this is a little different because if you look at this, look how his hair is there. And then here he's almost got bangs. Right. You know, so... Uh, so I again, this, we'll talk about this in a future show. But again, this is a, a, a case where I think this should have been the back, and that should have been the front. Just my opinion. Speaking of Elvis's hairstyles, though, bangs. When Elvis came out in Chicago, October '76, yeah. it was like he had bangs um, when he was in the Inca gold leaf suit. And there is about 40 minutes in of, Chicago. Yep, and there's you about know, 40 I, minutes of footage, uh, eight millimeter. And I was concert. so far away from him. You know, on, on that show. You know, 72 was awesome. I was in the mezzanine to the right of the stage, three rows up. Okay. I mean, Elvis was right there. He was just like right there, right where Carol said. So you're on the side of the suites and yeah. the stamps. And, and when he yeah. came up and sang, he was, he was like that distance. Very you know, cool. and I'm like, holy wow. cow. You know, I mean, he looked incredible, you know. Okay, so anyway, enough of that. Um, this is the new album. I have not heard it yet, but... Um, I, 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 I'm sure everybody wants to get it. It's, it's selling out like crazy from what I understand. Uh, it's probably going to you know, be one of those ones that goes up in value real quick. So I want to thank Steve Orlando for being here and having a little fun with this episode. So check out our items on eBay. We are selling as Collecting the King. I want to thank all of you who bought stuff from those auctions. And uh, we'll be continuing to put up things for sale. So keep track of all that. So don't forget to send me your inquiries and want lists to collectingthekeng at gmail.com for pricing, shipping, and payment details. We have over 1,000 Elvis 45 CDs and LPs in stock, as well as RCA promotional items, sheet music, authentic Las Vegas and tour souvenirs, and more. We don't have a list or catalog available, which is why we encourage you to send inquiries and want lists. If we don't have something you're looking for, we might be able to find it for you. So don't forget to contact us at collectingthekingatgmail.com. 
I want to thank everybody for being a part of the show and by subscribing and liking the episodes. And be sure and tell your friends about the show. And let's see if we can keep going, get more subscribers, and keeping the show alive. I appreciate you and all of your help. So that's it for this show. And I want to thank Steve Orlando once again. I want to thank you for watching and being a part of it. And we are out of here. Mm-hmm.